how to run Windows 11 for ARM on your M1 or M2 Mac using VMware Fusion. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I show you everything you need to know to get going. Check it out. Now, just a disclaimer, this is a technical preview and there is no 3D acceleration yet, so don't go into this thinking you're gonna work through your Steam backlog. With that said, let's get started. The very first step is to download Windows 11 for ARM from Microsoft's website. Okay, you'll find the link down for the Microsoft Windows Insider registration page in the description. You just wanna open that up. Here's what you'll see. You wanna click where it says sign in now. And then if you already have a Microsoft account, you can log in, but if you don't yet have one, you can just click create one, go through the creation process and then log in. So I have a Microsoft account, so I'll just go ahead and sign in. Next check, I accept the terms of this agreement and then click register now. And then you wanna click the link down below in the description that takes you to the Windows 11 on ARM Insider Preview. Again, click that link, that'll take you right there to the Windows Insider Preview Downloads page. Now you wanna select your edition. I recommend selecting the beta channel, but if you like to live on the bleeding edge, there's also the dev channel. Then click confirm, and now you can select your product language. So I'm gonna choose English, click continue, and then you should see the download now button. So just click download now to download the latest Insider Preview build. And there we go. So we can see the download progress in Safari and I've sped this up so I don't keep you all waiting. So this could take a while depending on your internet connection. It's about 10 gigabytes, so keep that in mind. This is the Windows 11 Insider Preview, it's completed. And you'll notice the file is not an ISO image, but it's a VHDX, which stands for virtual hard disk. We'll talk more about that later. The next step is to install Homebrew if you don't already have it installed on your Mac. So let me show you how to do that. So open up a spotlight search and search for terminal, or you can go to your applications folder and utilities and open up terminal. Bottom line, we need to open up a terminal window, right? All right, so the next step would just simply be to copy this command and paste it into the terminal window like this. So this will allow you to install the homebrew package manager. You might have already installed this on your machine, but if you haven't, just follow the directions, enter your password, press return on your keyboard, and it'll go through and install all the dependencies, including the command line tools for Xcode. And again, depending on your internet connection, this could take quite a while to complete, but once it does, you should see right here back at the command line. And now the next step is simply to run these two commands that you see here. And I've also conveniently placed them in the post on cellular.fm. But basically what these two commands will do is add a homebrew to your path so you can easily type brew at your command line from anywhere and that will run homebrew. The next step is super simple, install QEMU using homebrew. So this is the reason why we need homebrew to install QEMU. So to do so, you wanna open up your terminal, type in brew, space install space QEMU and then press return on your keyboard and that'll go in and install the QEMU emulator. And again, this could take a little bit of time on your machine, just be patient. Once it's complete, you'll be back at the terminal prompt. The next step, convert the Windows 11 VHDX download to a format that VMware Fusion can use. So we'll use QEMU to convert the VHDX into a VMDK, which VMware Fusion can use. So you wanna copy and paste this command. Again, this will be available down below in the description. And then you wanna put a space right after the VMDK and then simply drag the VHDX into the terminal like this. And once you do that, make sure there's a single space after VHDX and then paste in the last part of that command which will ensure that the converted virtual machine disk is placed on your desktop. So paste in your command should look similar to that. Press return. This will take a while to convert that VHDK to the VMDK. You see it already on the desktop. And then once it completes, you're back at a new terminal line. All right, so now we can actually close out of the terminal. We're finished with that. And now you can see on the downloads, you see the original VHDX, 10.38 gigabytes, roughly. We go to the desktop, you can see the new converted VMDK, 10.36, so roughly the same size of file. It's just converted to a format that VMware Fusion can work with, VMDK, Virtual Machine Disk. Next up, 
download and install VMware Fusion. So visit the VMware Customer Connect page and I'll have a link uh, for your convenience. So open that up. And then if you already have an account, you can just log in or you can click register if you wanna register and then you can go through to sign up. It's free if you wanna do that. So if you don't already have an account, no big deal. But I do have an account, so I'm gonna go in and I'm going to select log in. All right, and I'll just log in with my account to Customer Connect, and then click Sign In. Okay, so nice, we are signed in. So now we wanna visit the product download page. And you can see that here for the technology preview for VMware Fusion. I'll have that link for you. So once you visit there, you can see the Download Now button next to VMware Fusion DMG. So this is the technology preview. Click Download Now, and then select I Agree, and then accept. Now, obviously VMware is gonna update the technology preview so it may have a new build number and eventually they'll actually ship it. But the same premise applies. You're going to download VMware, right? All right, so it's downloaded. You can see it here in my downloads folder. So we're just gonna click that DMG to mount it. All right, and then double click here to install. And then you may see a little prompt here. Just click open, put in your password and then click okay. And now we're ready to head to the next step. And now folks, it's time to install Windows 11. So on the select installation method page, you wanna click where it says, create a custom virtual machine. So click that and then select continue. On the choose operating system page, you wanna select Microsoft Windows, of course, and then select Windows 11 64-bit ARM, and then click continue. On choose firmware type, you can just leave it as is, UFI, click continue. So Microsoft requires a virtual trusted platform module device, and the virtual machine must be encrypted with either full or fast encryption to add that TPM. So you can do full encryption or only the files needed to support a TPM. I chose that option. Then click auto generate password, and then make sure remember password and stored in your Mac's keychain is selected. That way you don't have to enter that password every time you boot your virtual machine. It might be a good idea to notate that password somewhere as well. Once you do, click continue, and then on the choose a virtual disk page, select use an existing virtual disk, then click choose virtual disk. Now it's time to find your Windows 11 VMDK. So we're gonna to go to the desktop, which is where I saved it. Allow access to your desktop if you're prompted by clicking OK, and there it is, the Windows 11 VMDK, select that. And now you have the option of making a separate copy of the virtual disk, which will copy that over to the virtual machines folder in your user folder, or you can share this virtual disk with the virtual machine that created it, but that could cause some conflicts if you're running multiple virtual machines. I just choose the default because I have plenty of space on this Mac, but of course that decision is gonna be up to you. Now go ahead and click where it says choose. All right, and then click continue. Now you have the option of either clicking finish or clicking customize settings to configure processor cores and memory. So I click customize settings and then go ahead and click save. That'll save it in the virtual machines folder in your user folder on your Mac. Now it's copying that VMDK over. All right, so now we are ready to configure this virtual machine. So I'll click processors and memory, select four processor cores, and I'll keep the memory at four gigabytes. You can configure it how you want it, but that's the way I'm gonna set it up. Once you're happy with the configuration, just click the X to close. So the first thing you wanna do is click the play button to get started. And that will begin the Windows setup process. And this will take a while. I'm gonna speed it up. But eventually you will arrive at the Windows setup screen that looks like this. Now, because the necessary virtual network driver isn't included with Windows Home or Pro for Windows on ARM, you'll need to bypass the network enrollment during Windows setup. Now to do that, you wanna press Shift F10 on your keyboard. Now for a Mac, you're probably gonna to need to hold the function key when you press Shift and F10. So that's gonna cause the command prompt to appear and that will allow you to enter this command, which will allow you to bypass the network enrollment screen that appears later. So we're gonna put it in. So you wanna type OOBE for out of box experience, OOBE forward slash bypass NRO and then press return on your keyboard. And you can find that command down below in the description. Now that will reload the Windows setup 
and allow you to bypass the network enrollment, which appears a few steps into the Windows setup. So just be patient, it'll load back up here. Okay, so there we go. So now we can step through the Windows setup. Uh, so we're gonna select our, our country or region, and that's gonna be a yes here for United States in my case. And then you wanna select your input method and then skip second keyboard layout. And now here you see I don't have internet. So before we entered that command earlier, this would not be an option. You would actually be stuck here. So click, I do not have internet and then click continue with limited setup to continue past that. Now click accept on the agreement into your name. So I'll put Jeff and then click next. And then for password, you can put in a password if you choose to. I'm just gonna click next to skip the password so I don't have to enter one. All right, so I'm going to uncheck all these privacy settings, turn them all off and then click accept. And that's pretty much it folks, as far as the Windows setup portion. So just be patient, this will take a while. I've sped this portion up for your convenience. So here we are with Windows 11 running right here on the desktop, the start menu is open. But there's a couple of things you're gonna notice right off the bat. Number one, there is no internet connection. And number two, if you go to settings and go to display, you're gonna notice that you cannot configure the display resolution because the display driver isn't installed. And you can tell you don't have internet when you try to browse the web, or you see all these blink icons here, these rely on an internet connection to actually populate. So that's another indicator that you do not have internet yet. And finally, we're at the home stretch. Now it's time to install VMware tools. Okay, so the first step is to open up your start menu and then type in the search PowerShell, P-O-W-E-R-S-H-E-L-L. -L, and then you should see Windows PowerShell. You should see run as administrator, just click on that. You can also right click on the Windows PowerShell and select run as administrator as well. And then click yes here. And here is the PowerShell command prompt. Now you wanna type a command in this prompt and I have the command conveniently located right here for you. You'll find this in the description as well. So you wanna type that command into the PowerShell. Let's go ahead and do that now. So I'll type in set dash execution policy space remote signed. And once you have that typed in, just press return on your keyboard like this. And now you want to approve the execution policy change. Just want to type a Y and then press return. And there you go. So this change is what is going to allow you to run the VMware tool script. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. Just hit the X. Now in your menu bar, go to virtual machine, select reinstall VMware tools, and then click where it says install. And that is going to mount the DVD drive, the virtual drive with VMware tools. So you can either click on the autoplay notification or you can just click Windows Explorer, find your DVD drive, and then scroll down here and you should see the setup script. So this PowerShell script, you simply right click on setup and then select run with PowerShell. Now you want to allow by clicking yes on the user account control pop-up and you'll see this script as it installs the necessary drivers. So just watch, you'll see it. First of all, you'll see the network driver. See it? There we go. And then you'll see the display driver as well. In just a second. So you can see both are installed successfully. So now you can either wait for the countdown to elapse or just press a key to continue to close out of PowerShell. And folks, the hard part, it's done. You have installed Windows using VMware Fusion on your Mac with Apple Silicon, and you've installed the necessary drivers. So you can already tell you're connected to the internet because all those icons, they're no longer blink. They pulled in the necessary assets. If you go to settings and you go to display, you're gonna see, yes, indeed, you can change the resolution. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so let's actually change it to UHD. There we go. And we can adjust the scaling as well. 
to make the icons a little bit bigger. But that's all there is to it. That is how you install Windows 11 for ARM using VMware Fusion on your Apple Silicon Mac. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please let me know down below in the comments section. If you want more videos like this, also let me know and leave a thumbs up so that others know this video is legit and actually helpful. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave that down below as well. And I'll be back in another video soon to come. And while you're waiting, why not check out some of my other videos as well? This is Jeff with Cellular.